Maruti Suzuki is known for having multiple cars within the same segment. So that probably explains why they've taken out this new espresso that's being slotted into the B1 hatchback market space. But this car aims to distinguish itself from the rest of its cousins with its SUV-esque appeal. Now this is incidentally also the fourth car that's powered by Maruti Suzuki's rather brilliant 1.0-litre K-series petrol engine. But before we begin this review, we must address the elephant in the room. And that is in regards to the Espresso's looks. Well, to be honest, it looks fairly basic and from certain angles, it even looks a little agrarian. But let me tell you something, with prices ranging between Rs 3.69 lakh to Rs 4.91 lakhs X showroom, this car is very well priced. Now with that, Maruti Suzuki has an ace up its sleeve. They're offering you a couple of accessory packages that set you back by a very reasonable Rs 26,490. So with that, you get a lot of body cladding, you get interior color inserts, you get exterior color inserts, so you can personalize the way your espresso looks. And not just that, it in fact makes this car look just a little bit better. Now the Espresso is an especially spacious car inside. You will not believe how much cabin space this car has as a compact hatchback. So up front, you not only have enough space for two occupants, but when you step into the back, the sheer leg room here is just going to amaze you. I mean, I'm all out of stretching my legs and I still have so much room. So, I mean, you really have to give it to Maruti for carving out so much space here, despite its compact dimensions. This car, in fact, even has a big enough boot. Now, coming back to the rear seat itself, the bench is fairly long. The seat is placed high up. So you have all the under thigh support that you need and the backrest is fairly decent in terms of lower back support as well. What I do not like though are these fiddly little headrests. They're very annoying. Uh, you have no support at all. Now when it comes to overall quality of the cabin and equipment, uh, I have to say that Maruti has put in a fair amount of effort. So the plastics aren't too bad. They're fairly decent front and back the dashboard as well. In terms of equipment, you get this touch screen infotainment system. You get a digital instrument cluster for the driver. Moving on, of course, uh, keeping with times, you do get power steering, you get air conditioning, you get power windows for the front two occupants, while the rear windows are wind down windows. And uh, the only disappointment here, I would have to say, is that the rear view mirror does not have a day night function. And in fact, it has a little bit of power, the glass. So uh, you tend to get a disoriented vision of your rear view sometimes. So, I mean, that's a quality issue that Maruti can definitely look into. <music> So as I mentioned, there's a lot of product positioning happening here with the Espresso. And uh, well, as a B-segment hatchback, it distinguishes itself from the likes of the Celerio and Alto K10 in the sense that uh, there's nothing quite like it on the market. The Renault Quid was the first car which uh, went across this appeal of a crossover hatchback. And now Maruti's come out all guns blazing with this the Espresso. So on the face of it, uh, it's got a very tall profile, it's got a decent enough footprint, and it has a very spacious cabin. But most important of all is that engine. The one liter K-series engine is really punchy. It sounds fairly nice as well. And uh, given the manual transmission, you'll have a lot of fun out on the road. So um, on that account, the Espresso feels very nice to drive because in the lower reaches of the power band, Unfortunately, there is no rev counter here, but uh, in the lower reaches of the power band, what happens is that the engine is fairly quiet. Now this engine, when you fire it up, uh, I have to say, especially during cold starts, because this is a three-cylinder engine, there's a fair amount of vibration. So that's something that's not so nice. And in fact, it's always been a trait of this engine. But when you get going, uh, this engine settles down. There are no more vibrations as such. Uh, it's fairly quiet in its operation in the lower reaches of the power band. Although you have to keep in mind that this is a budget car, so in-cabin insulation is limited, which is why you do tend to get a lot of more ambient noise from outside. Now, for the most part, for normal drivers, 
you know, keeping this engine in the 1 to 2000 RPM range is more than enough. In fact, even between 1500 RPM, you can shift gears and you can always be on the power. So this engine really offers great drivability. Now the manual model, of course, has a nice smooth shifting five-speed gearbox, but this car we're driving here is the five-speed AMT gearbox. Now I am quite familiar with Maruti Suzuki's AMT cars. This car, in this application, it feels fairly jerky. And if my memory serves me correctly, I did drive the second generation Alto K10 that did come with the same engine and gearbox setup, and that was much smoother. But coming back to this car, there is that slight bit of jerkiness, even during downshifts, um, which is quite a surprise because I wasn't expecting it. So that is an issue that I faced in slow moving traffic. And uh, typical of an AMT, you will get jerky upshifts as well. But remember, the trick to driving an AMT is much like a manual car. Uh, every time you want an upshift from the gearbox, you just simply let off the throttle a little bit and get back on it gently again. And this will give you a smooth upshift that will not bother you at all. Now that might seem like a little bit of work, but trust me, once you get used to driving this car, you won't even notice those movements and upshifts. So once you get accustomed to this transmission, which you will very easily, uh, there's no looking back. Uh, an AMT automatic is so much more affordable than a conventional automatic and you cannot overlook the benefit of fuel efficiency as well because AMT transmissions are just as efficient as the manual counterparts. So what happens when the roads open up and you open up the taps a little bit in the espresso? Well, uh, step on it and I really like the engine note. It's a fairly fun one to have and uh, it's nothing like anything else you have on our market. So you have to give it to Suzuki on that front for developing an entertaining powertrain. So step on it, uh, it, the gearbox will automatically kick down a gear or two depending on the speed and RPM range. And once it does that, you just shoot into the horizon. You get a lot of usable power out on the road from the mid range to the high range as well, all the way to the red line. Now there is no rev counter here, but I do know that this engine revs a little past 6,000 RPM and uh, where this gearbox will give you an upshift. But remember, this is an AMT. So again, you'll be faced with a jerky gear change at the red line. So it's best that you let off a little bit just before you feel that you're going to approach the red line. Um, sounds like a lot of work, but trust me, it's just intuitive stuff once you get used to driving a car. Now, when it comes to high speed stability, the espresso stays planted on the road and you do get a decent amount of confidence out on the road. But around corners is where its SUV-esque appeal uh, cuts in a little bit because the tall springs generate a little bit of body roll. But it's nothing that's unsettling and you can definitely manage it. So all in all, I think the Espresso makes not just for a great city car, but a decent highway commuter as well. But if you want to have a little more fun, it's that manual model which you must have. For we have tested it out on a racetrack, on the BIC in fact, uh, as a part of our annual jury rounds. And over there, well, on the wide sweeping bends of the BIC, I must say that we all had a lot of fun driving the Espresso. True, it leans in a lot, especially on a racetrack when you're just out and out attacking corners. It leans in a lot, but beyond that lean, you begin to realize just how good the chassis is. This it's extremely well balanced, this, this Hartic K platform. So once that lean is over, you get a lot of positive grip and you can just throw a lot of speed around corners. You can carry a lot of speeds or in and out of corners and you'll have a lot of fun. Trust me, this chassis is very well balanced. So the Espresso actually can be a whole lot of fun to drive if you go for the manual model. The Maruti Suzuki Espresso then is a brilliant car to drive. It's actually quite a lot of fun to drive. The K-Series 1.0-litre engine is a gem of a motor. So it has great drivability in the lower end of the rev range, in the mid end and in the top end. So it's a lot of fun. The chassis is very well balanced. Uh, true, yeah, the tall springs result in a little bit of body roll around high speed bends. Uh, but you know, when you look at the upside of the higher ground clearance, this is something that's gonna really help it in a customer base that extends beyond cities. Moving into the interiors, well, on the inside, like I mentioned, there's a lot of space. You have a very decent amount of equipment. There are a few quirks in the cabin, as I've pointed out. Uh, so it's not all a perfect car, which uh, really no car is. 
so it has its setbacks but trust me uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to this car and uh, overall moving back to the aspect of styling well it's a matter of taste of course but like i said the availability of these accessory packages allows you to really spruce up your espresso make it personalized something according to your tastes and when you do that i think that it's going to appeal to quite a few buyers out there now maruti you've given us every sort of hatchback that is possible including a micro suv as you like to call it but as a personal request and i'm sure quite a few customers out there feel the same how about giving us one of those sleek hatchbacks once again like the Maruti Suzuki 800 or the Zen for that matter put in this engine and it's going to be an absolute hoot to drive <laughs>